Welcome back to Music Kingdom. In this video, we will be listening to, giving a music theory breakdown for, and reviewing Nothing Else Matters by Metallica. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, my name is Francis. If you are a fellow nerd for music such as myself, and you appreciate not just reactions, but in-depth reviews and analysis of songs, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And of course, I work my ass off on these videos, whether it be video prep, setting up, filming, editing, etc. However, due to copyright claims, any money made from ad revenue does not go to me, it goes to the record labels. And so, if you'd like to support the work that goes into these videos, you'll find a link to Music Kingdom's tip jar and a variety of commissions in the description and comments below. And if you really want to go big, you can now commission any song of your choice to be reviewed right here on the channel for everyone else to see. So don't hesitate, any support is greatly appreciated. All right, now before we give the song a listen, first let's briefly talk Nothing Else Matters by Metallica. Nothing Else Matters is the third single from Metallica's self-titled fifth studio album, Metallica, also known as The Black Album. The song peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Mainstream Rock Tracks chart, number six on the UK singles chart, number one in Denmark, and reached the top 10 on many other European charts as well. Nothing Else Matters was written by Metallica's lead vocalist, James Hetfield. He wrote the song while on the phone with his then-girlfriend, feeling homesick and missing her while on tour. For those reasons, the song is often interpreted as a love song, but it can also be perceived as a song about the strong emotional connection between two individuals. In more recent years, Hetfield considered the song to be about Metallica's fans as well. Otherwise, it is often speculated the song is about a musician's life in general, a theory that finds support through certain lines of the song. The song's title, for instance, could be interpreted as a musician's willingness to suffer emotionally in order to live the musician's life. Some of the lyrics also heavily suggest the theme of change, which could be a message to diehard Metallica fans and the band's change towards more mainstream music. However, of course, that is all theory. Overall, the lyrics convey raw emotions, with an emphasis on the personal struggles and experiences of Metallica's frontman, James Hetfield. Hetfield originally wrote the song for himself as a personal expression of his feelings and emotions. He began playing a melody on the guitar, which eventually became the intro of the song. He was reluctant to share it with the rest of the band, as Hetfield considered it quote-unquote too soft for the band's genre and style. Drummer Lars, however, was impressed by Nothing Else Matters and suggested the band should work on the piece. Producer Bob Rock saw potential in Nothing Else Matters too, but felt the song needed a bigger sound. Therefore, he advised the band to add a string section to the song. Appropriately, Metallica recruited composer Michael Kamen to write the orchestral arrangement, which provided the large sound Nothing Else Matters needed. Nothing Else Matters initially displeased Metallica fans for its commercial non-metal sound, but the song, as well as the entire Black Album, was extremely successful with the broader audience. And eventually, despite the initial skepticism from diehard Metallica fans, of course, due to the song and album's departure from their signature thrash metal, sound, it became one of the band's most popular and enduring records. Nothing Else Matters ultimately reached number 34 on the US Billboard Hot 100, and the Black Album would eventually sell over 17 million copies in the US. Not to mention the music video for Nothing Else Matters surpassing a billion views on YouTube. Now for what it's worth, you may have noticed I did not put first time hearing in this video's thumbnail or title. And that is because I have heard the song before. I do realize that many people from different walks of life have not heard the song before. But having said that, anybody who at least identifies as a music nerd, whether they're into metal or not, is bullshitting you and lying for views if they say they have never heard Nothing Else Matters. Now rest assured, speaking for myself, I will say, even though I am familiar with the song, it's not like I know it that well. I have heard it a number of times because duh, but ultimately not a lot and it has been a while. So I suppose what I could say is that while this is by no means my first time hearing it, I definitely will be listening to it with fresh ears. Otherwise, what I will say as well before we listen to the song is that it's good to be back. If you are a longtime subscriber, you'll know that this channel is not my full-time job. It's not even a job. It is purely something I devote myself to in whatever spare time I have. 
and between Thanksgiving and having a birthday shortly after Thanksgiving, and then flying out of country to attend a wedding, and then Christmas happening right after I get back, and then catching up on some other shit and getting back into a groove after the new year, I wanna say it at least feels like I've made maybe two or three videos in like a four month span. So it's just good to be back. I've missed doing this. I'm excited to get back into the groove. Missed you guys, and by all means, hit me with suggestions for future video ideas. All right, at long last, with all that out of the way, it's finally time we give the song a listen. And just a heads up, I will be pausing a couple times to share my thoughts, but most importantly, to avoid any potential copyright strikes. Also, I'll quickly remind you that you can now go big and commission any song of your choice to be reviewed right here on the channel for all to see. And of course, as usual, be sure to stick around after the song for a music theory breakdown from our expert. And then we're going to divide the song into specific categories, grade them each, average them out, and arrive at an overall score. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the band Genesis, but there's a song they have called Entangled, and this guitar intro sounds a lot like that song. Beautiful. Already, what a far cry from some of their louder stuff. Especially the stuff I've become accustomed to reviewing by them and others on this channel. I suppose is what the song is known for. It's also well produced, which for the genre of metal is more rare. But the layers of instruments, you can really hear with the headphones. Thoughts so far, as mentioned, at least I think I mentioned, because sometimes I forget if I thought something or said something, but the lyrics really are so beautiful. Obviously, in my opinion at least, with a song like this, it's not like Metallica is trying to flex what they're capable of to a large extent otherwise. Not to say the song is unimpressive aside from the lyrics, but you can really tell that that's where they're wanting to cast the spotlight. And good on them, especially 30 years ago, not necessarily conforming to what the fans are expecting or demanding. And following their own artistic integrity, one might say, or I suppose I might say. So close, no The vocal style reminds me a bit of Tool in a song like Lateralis. To some extent. Beautiful with the strings. And Metallica's already masters of guitar harmonies. So to combine, it's stunning. And 
it sounds like a, a good composition, not just melodically, but perhaps with the time signatures. I'll have to see what the expert says. I never opened myself this way. Life is ours, we live it our way. All these words I don't just see. Production is beefing up a bit more now. The strings are giving a bit more. Alright, thoughts by this point in the song. I would say it really only gets more impressive, but in a subtle, tasteful way. I really do love how the song is produced. For me, I think Lyrics aside, that really is the key to what makes this song so great and why it hits the way it does. The addition of strings is what really blows me away. Strings and horns in music, in my opinion, are almost always welcome additions. It's just such a fabulous mix and I love the contrast as well because the genre by nature has such an edge to it, such a toughness to it, to the point where one might say its counterpart is something as soft and tender and beautiful as strings. Which is ironic anyway because so much of the genre of metal is derived or inspired by classical music. Now since I have not heard the song in quite some time, I am trying to remember where it goes and how it ends, so all that to say I am very excited to continue. Never care for what they say. Never care for games they play. Beautiful. Never care for what they do. Never care for what they know. And this chorus hitting a bit harder is a great example of production kind of beefing up. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about this. And the drumming is fabulous. I would have loved a longer solo though, as I'm sure most of us would have as well. But I like that they're keeping true to the aesthetic of the song. So tasteful. And I know this is old news, but... I love that Metallica, especially back then, were not afraid to change it up and express themselves in a more pretty, slow way as artists, not being limited to the confines of thrash metal. Alright, initial thoughts before we go to the expert's corner and before grading the song. As mentioned earlier, obviously the lyrics are the star of the show. The writing is absolutely beautiful. But also like, duh, that's literally what the song is best known for. As also mentioned, perhaps for the billionth time, I did think the production was beautiful if I'm highlighting things other than the writing that I absolutely adored. Just such a refreshing, inspired, creative take on a metal song. And in my opinion, just really effectively drove the aesthetic, the mood, the vibe, whatever word you wanna use of the song home and made it hit even harder. Aside from all of that though, I will be brutally honest because I am not here to kiss ass to Metallica fans or just blindly praise a song to make people happy. I have my own opinions of course, which I'm sure many of you will disagree with, but my one thing with the song that I didn't dislike but didn't necessarily love would be the vocals. It is my understanding that over time his vocals would get better and better and better, and I have experienced that for myself having heard earlier Metallica songs when I would say they weren't even that good. In this one, they were good. I'm not trying to say they were bad, but uh, it's not like you're necessarily wowed, or maybe I'm just speaking for myself. And also to be fair, vocals are not necessarily the point 
of the song either. As mentioned, it's more about the writing, the storytelling, the aesthetic, the vibe, the experience. And one might argue that the kind of rough around the edges, if you will, vocal delivery is deliberate, is kind of perfect for a song like this to really drive the emotions home in more of a raw way. So I get all of that and I am trying to be fair, but if I'm just calling it as I see it, it's not like they were necessarily otherworldly or great. And I do have more specific thoughts pertaining to the categories in which I grade a song, which I will get to later when I indeed break it apart. But in the meantime, let's go to the expert's corner for a music theory breakdown and to see how he grades the song's composition. Welcome to the Experts Corner. This is Nothing Else Matters by Metallica, and I'm here to give it a composition score. This song's in the time signature of 6-8, and it's in the key of E minor. It could also be argued that it's in G major, the relative major, but it pretty much stays at home in E minor. So if we're talking chords and progressions, this song is actually incredibly simple. Let me show you a couple of the main progressions. In the verses, it starts on E minor, down to D major, down to C major. Repeats that a few times. Then it goes G major, B dominant seven, back to E minor. It's a simple chord progression, but it's cool and it has that neat kind of dark minor feel. However, despite its simplicity, it does something that I think is very cool going into the chorus, something my ears were not expecting. You've got the goes to C major, A major, which you're not expecting, but it's a really clever way for them to temporarily take the song to the key of D major for the choruses. So in the choruses, you've got pretty much just three chords, D major, C major, A major. Now, just because this song has pretty simple chord progressions doesn't automatically mean that it's a bad composition and that it's gonna get a low score from me. On the contrary, this song has some excellent melodic elements. It was arranged beautifully from the guitar in the very beginning, to the harmonies in the vocals, to the guitar solo. Melody really stands out for me in this song. Overall, I think it is a very nice composition despite its simplicity, and I'm gonna give it a seven and a half out of 10. Back to you, Francis. A very special thank you to our expert for providing a music theory breakdown and giving the song's composition a good but not quite great 7.5 out of 10. And now it's time to divide the song into four more categories, grading them each, averaging them out, and arriving at an overall score. Starting off with the category of production, I'll try not to be too redundant because I have spoken a lot about it already, but worth mentioning once again would be the usage of strings and not just randomly throwing strings at a song to make it better, doing it in a very intentional and tasteful way. In some parts of the song, you almost can't even tell they are there, but I had it on the headphones very loud. And in moments when you wouldn't expect it, almost as if at a lower volume, there's just a touch of it here or a feel of it there. And then of course, as the song progresses, it beefs up more more and more, which is what makes that final chorus just really hit in exactly the right way. But of course, while I could talk about them all day, the song's production is not just about the strings. Obviously, we could talk about the mixing as well, which was very nice, but nicer than that, for me at least, would be the layers of instruments in this song. Yes, you had the solo, yes, you had the main melody, and yes, you had the strings, but all throughout the song, in a way that I would describe as subtle, you have these background layered elements of guitar. And to some extent, extent harmonizing as well, not necessarily in the classic Metallica guitar harmonizing way, but just nice, intricate, deliberate. And then of course, similar to the strings, as the song progressed, those beefed up as well, really driving home the emotion and the lyrics of the song. It's things like that which scream a great production, in my opinion, a very great production, which will be reflected by an 8.5 out of 10. And generally, I don't often give very high scores for production within the genre of metal, because typically, in the genre of metal, as mentioned, production is going to be more minimalistic. That way, it can be more easily replicated live, because you know it's a band, it's not some hip hop group or an R&B song. But of course, this song is one of those exceptions, absolutely exquisite. Up next, we have the category of lyrics, and I would say that most of us would agree that these are some of the best that Metallica has ever penned. I'm not going to pretend to be a metalhead, but to my knowledge, that is quite literally the legacy 
of the song. Now, are these the best lyrics they would ever write in their entire catalog of music? That is not for me to say. Instead, I would actually ask you guys. Personally, I would say no, but that is by no means an insult to the song either. Anyways, again, I do think the writing is stellar. I like how personal it is. I like how vulnerable it is. I like how beautiful and tender it is. Now, is it quite in the realm of just pure songwriting poetry among some of the best written songs in the history of mankind? Many would actually argue yes. Yes, I would argue perhaps that it's up there. Again, not for me to say, but I do like how inspired they are. I do like how original they are. And so I will be giving them a very rare nine out of 10. All right, keeping it moving, let's talk vocals, which again, for me, were perhaps the low part of the song, but by no means bad. Instead of saying they're bad, I would perhaps say that when compared to the production or the writing or the originality or the composition, etc., up against the other components of the song, I would say they are the least spectacular. Now, to be fair, on the other hand, as already mentioned, it's not like the vocals are the point of the song. And many people could say that the vocal style with a song like this is perfect for its nature, is perfect for its subject matter, is perfect for its mood. So I get all of that. But in the spirit of being subjectively objective or objectively subjective, I would say the vocal delivery is good. Not quite very good, not quite great, but good, which will be reflected by a seven out of 10. Now, arriving at our final category of originality, this one was a bit tricky for me. On one hand, compositionally, melodically, vocally, etc., it's not the most original song. You can find other songs that sound like this one. So perhaps through that type of lens, one might say this isn't necessarily a very original song. If you want to use synonyms, you could also say creative, artistic, abstract, etc. However, that being said, in the spirit of fairness and in defense of the song, you have to acknowledge the context, the history, the cultural significance, the evident impact this song had. This song is literally revered. It is often covered. Elton fucking John is like, that's my shit. Elton John, Miley Cyrus, well, mm. all of that means something. All of that is worth something. And to me, it pertains to originality. And aside from its influence, aside from its impact, aside from the reverence that so many people outside of the genre of metal have for this song, you also have to take into account how badass this was for Metallica to do, at least in my own opinion. As mentioned earlier, at least according to various sources over the decades the song has existed, when it first came out, it was well received, but not by everyone. And some of those people who were not very into it were the existing of the time diehard Metallica fans. In my opinion, historically, you do see a lot of artists or bands kind of stick to what works, pleasing the fans, not necessarily selling out or being generic, but keeping to the same formula, not necessarily evolving as artists. And so my point is, I would say this song screams evolution for Metallica. It screams artistic integrity. In my opinion, it so obviously says, fuck the boxes that we've perhaps put ourselves into. And that's something for me that regardless of what your genre is, regardless of which decade you made music, is most impressive and always welcome. Evolving as an artist, evolving as a creator, not necessarily chasing record sales or awards or trying to appease the fans, but creating what you want to create. And Metallica did that with this song. So ultimately, I mean, look, is this song as original as, say, Bohemian Rhapsody? No. I wouldn't describe it as original necessarily in that way, but damn it, Metallica was original with themselves. And that's what matters. All that said, I would give this song's originality a very great 8.5 out of 10. So now if we add it all up, including the expert's composition score and average it out, nothing else matters by Metallica from their self album. So now if we add it all up, including the expert's composition score and average it out, Nothing Else Matters by Metallica from their fifth studio album, self-titled Metallica, also known as the Black Album released in 1991, gets a great 8.1 out of 10. For all of the aforementioned reasons, perhaps you can see how and why that song ultimately landed at that number. And honestly, this time around, I would say it's pretty fair. And the reason I say that is because sometimes after I listen to the song and then grade the song, the number it lands on is either lower or higher than my own enjoyment of the song or what I think of the song. But this song, legendary as it is, is a song that I would say is great. 
reflected by an eight, but perhaps not quite that 8.5 or nine or 9.5 or a 10. And I would say many people do consider the song to be that great, perhaps because of its reputation. So yes, for me at least, and I guess it's easy for me to say because I'm the one making this video, but I would say an 8.1 is, is right there. All that said, of course, that is just my own assessment. So in the comments below, please let me know if you think I am right on the money, batshit crazy, or somewhere in between. Absolutely nobody asked me, but for what it's worth, I do think there are far better Metallica songs than this one. In my personal opinion, I would say that elite tier is reserved for a song like Fade to Black, which I would consider to be not just the greatest Metallica song ever, not just one of the greatest metal songs of all time, but I would say it's so good that it transcends the genre of metal and is a song that I would describe as simply one of the greatest songs in the history of music. Bit of a side tangent there, I realize we're talking about Nothing Else Matters and I already made a video on Fade to Black. So yes, let me know whether or not you agree as well as what other songs by Metallica or whoever else you would like for this channel to review next. And again, if you'd like to make that decision for yourself, you can absolutely go big and commission the next review for this channel. Or of course, if you're just feeling supportive, you'll find the link to Music Kingdom's tip jar and other commissions in the description and comments below. As mentioned, if you are a fellow nerd for music such as myself, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. This has been another edition of Music Kingdom. Thank you so much for listening with me, and I look forward to jamming with you in the next one.